I, I have a lot to do as a leader to become better. And I'm basically putting the ceiling on my entire staff for their growth. So I have to raise my ceiling as a leader in order for them to raise their ceiling of their potential and what they can do to grow. All right. What is up, everyone? I'm excited to be here with my friend, John Hogan, owner of Blue Nail Roofing and Siding right here in New Jersey. So you've got two Jersey guys on the show today. It's your lucky day. What's going on, John? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm uh, doing great. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're busy, busy production season right now, uh, but I wanted to kind of get your story. Uh, we've known one another for a few years. We worked together for a couple years. Uh, you guys, in my opinion and experience, have uh, have a great a great brand, a great company. You're young. You're just kind of getting going. Uh, a few years in, but you know, really got a, a good solid base and foundation that you're building on top of. So I'm excited to hear uh, hear some of your story, and more importantly, share it with the audience. Thanks, though. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Um, you know, we wouldn't be where we are without some of your help too. So we're glad to have worked with you in the past. All right. Heck of a guy. How about that? You got to <laughs> flatter the host here. I guess that's all, that's all part of it. So I want to dive in, John, to some of your uh, structure and team and whatnot. But before that, before we get into that, can you give the audience a little bit of a, a snapshot as to uh, what, what is Blue Nail? Where are you guys? You know, what's a, what's a company look like and everything? Sure. Uh, my name is John Hogan. I'm the owner of Blue Nail Roofing and Siding. We're in northern New Jersey. Um, I grew up in the construction industry, and I went the traditional route. I went to college. I did my MBA, and I kind of circled back. And, uh, you know, I was always interning in finance and going that route. But it seemed like everybody else my age was doing that. So we kind of looked around. You know, my father was in the, con the construction industry for a long time. He was retiring. His competitors were retiring. It kind of felt like there was a niche there uh, or a void that somebody kind of had to step in and there was market share to take. So um, I was engaged at the time uh, before the wedding and we felt like it was the right time to take a risk on it. So we rolled the dice and here we are. Now we, we live up here in Montville where my wife's from. Uh, we have our office in the center of town and uh, we live here too. So Nice. I, I, I can resonate with that. I, I graduated college. I went into finance myself and uh, and realized that's not what I wanted to do forever. It was kind of boring, uh, the sector that I was in anyway, and uh, got out and got back into the construction industry where I grew up. So I definitely resonate with that. Um, when did you guys start, John? How, how old is the company right now? Uh, we're about five years in. We Technically started end of 2016, but we really didn't do too much business until 2017 rolled around. Um, All right, right, I got you. Five year mark. So you see this opportunity, a uh, bunch of old guys retiring. It's a it's a really wealthy area of of the state and the country. It's the suburb suburbs of New York City, and so that's great opportunity. Can you take us back to like those first like like what did you do? How did you sell those couple first couple of jobs? Like how did you you know set up with a supplier? How did you find your crews? Like Obviously, there's a lot that goes into that, but if you can give us a little... Sure. So I'm not originally from northern New Jersey. I know you know Jersey's not a, a huge state. You could drive from the top to bottom in like three hours, but I'm more from central Jersey. I grew up in Union County. Um, I, I didn't know much about you know Morris County where we're at now, um, but I did go to, to college in Madison. That's where I met my wife, Nina, and her family's from up here in Morris County. Um, just from visiting her and, and going to my in-laws house, I, I just identified a lot of shingles and, and roofs in the area that were actually very shiny. And, um, I started looking into it, found out that it was a manufacturer's defect. The granules were running down. It was the UV rays were eating up the, uh, the asphalt in the shingles. And then it was leaving the exposed fiberglass mat. So when I started, uh, I put together a a marketing strategy based around that. I called it the shiny roof. Um, you know, mailer is what, is what we did. So I sent out mailers. I started utilizing Facebook. This was kind of early on uh, when it, there wasn't much Facebook ad advertising out there. So we were targeting homes with shiny roofs. It, it was pretty easy to identify. All you had to do was drive through the neighborhoods and, and you could spot them. So I would write down addresses. I'd go back. We would 
sent out handwritten mailers at this point. You know, it was just me. I had uh, I had time to kill back then, so I'd write that write out these handwritten letters to the homeowners, explaining with photos, uh, not of their home in particular, but of you know, in general, a picture of shiny shingles, what we call them. Uh, explaining what it is, what it means, what it could do to their home, and how we could fix it. So we started mailing those out directly. We started running Facebook campaigns based around that. Now, at the time, I wasn't up on you know retargeting or anything like that, but we would you know the first home that we got, I would go up on the roof. I would take a, a video with the drone at the time we were using, or just take it myself. Uh, at the time, we were using this app called Bomb Bomb. I would, it was like a video platform, kind of like Loom is today. And we would capture those photos and produce that into video content and just boost that ad for a one mile radius. And keep in mind that if there was a shiny home on 123 Main Street, the rest of Main Street was probably going to have shiny shingles because the way that this town is set up is, you know, these groups of builders went in and developed these areas. So, there's a lot of you know track homes uh some people call it that were just kind of all put up at the same time so we ended up landing these just sections of town um and it, it kind of built our profile really quickly or our portfolio very quickly and uh, we kind of took it from there dude so you're geo-targeting neighborhoods long before uh guys like me were, were talking about it so i love that just getting in the trenches and Look, you you saw a problem and you identified a problem. And I think one of the things that that's cool there is that we it's something that we help clients like you with is like, okay, you understood that that was a problem, but those homeowners didn't know they had a problem, right? right. So it was your job to not go out there and say, hey, we can fix your roof because they didn't think they had an issue. But you had to make them aware and educate them of this problem that they had. And then set up the appointment and then educate them on the solution that you had for them. So that's that's awesome marketing, whether you called it, you know, whatever you called it. I know it's just grassroots, just kind of getting your name out there and, and putting your boosting some posts. But like that's that's awesome marketing right there. Yeah, it was uh, it, it definitely got us kick started. It was interesting because a lot of those roofs weren't leaking. So uh, but I mean, there was no there was basically there was essentially no shingles on the roof, right? It was just a fiberglass mat. So um, once we started doing a couple of them, then the neighborhood kind of knew what was going on and, and they trusted us a little bit more. And that was, you know, we were knocking on doors at the time, deliver, we would mail out the shiny roof, handwritten letter, um, and then we would deliver it personally to your door too. So you would get it in the mail and then if we were working in the neighborhood, we were knocking on your door and you know, New Jersey is, is not very receptive to people knocking on their doors. So luckily people were kind enough to us uh, and we had the right intent. You know, we weren't just, we weren't just uh, going door to door, just trying to get anybody, you know, we were only knocking if there was a legit issue on the roof. So. Right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So I, I love like, and I do the same thing. You're saying we and us, I mean, really it's just John at this point, right? Yes. At that point it was just me. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. Well, because it shows how far you've grown now. You got this big team now, but back then it's like, yeah, we did this, and and it was us, and basically, like, yeah, it was it was John, uh, and maybe you know you sign the letters like you know the Blue Nail Team, which can yeah. be can be a, a team of what? Hey, we've all done that. I love I love it. That's so cool. Absolutely. Um, all right, so you're getting some traction. You're solving this problem. You're in the neighborhoods. You're building a a little reputation there. Someone who's you know, it could be trusted in the neighborhood. Um, what, you know, that that's a great start. And that sounds like, sounds perfect. Obviously not everything in business, uh, you know, goes perfect. It rarely does. So what were like, what was like the first major hiccup that, that you guys experienced? First major hiccup. Or, you know, um, something that wasn't a challenge that wasn't expected or like, so, oh man, I didn't know I'd have to deal with this. I would say early on, I, there was definitely an obstacle to overcome and it turned out to be more mental than anything. Um, you know, we put this vision together and we had a clear view on what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. 
it was this next generation of construction and everything is going to be transparent and we're going to bring technology into this and you could see what we're doing and you know we had all the right intentions but right out of the gate i'm showing up to people's houses and i'm I don't even remember at this point, around 25-ish, 24, something like that at the time. Um, 25 years old, you're talking about? 25 years old, yeah, sorry. Okay. Somewhere in that range. Uh, And I'm showing up to people's houses and every single time I'm getting, oh, you're the owner? How old are you? Like, is this a family company? Did you start this? Do you know what you're talking about? And it, it definitely got into my head. So... It, I remember sitting down one night actually thinking, like, do I change my business card from, I think at the time it said either president or owner on it or something like that. I'm like, do I just change my title to project consultant or project manager or something like that? So people just stop asking me. And I'm glad I didn't. There was just, there was this aha moment when it was, at the time, it was our largest job. We sold a da vinci roof uh in mendham and it was well over a hundred thousand dollars it was a lot of copper and i knew i I knew that thoroughly uh growing up you know with my father in union county uh we did a lot of slate with churches and spanish tile and, and cedar and specialty things like that so i had background in it which is not a common thing uh so i was very confident and i knew what i was talking about there and I knew the homeowner. Um, she was very transparent with me that she got multiple estimates. She talked to a lot of different people and she was actually naming them for me. In the end, we ended up winning the project. Uh, and we weren't, we weren't the cheapest. We weren't the highest either. But at the time, we weren't the cheapest. And she sat down with me and she thanked me for being thorough and transparent. And she said that she went with us because you know, she was afraid to, to put the, the roof of her home in somebody's hands that she couldn't trust. And uh, after selling that, that was it. Like the switch went off and I was confident. I was like, you know what? I, I do know what I'm talking about. I'm not giving myself enough credit. And nobody in the sales process really mentioned age ever again. So it was in my head. I still from time to time get like, oh, wait, you're the owner? But it's not nearly the way that it was. Just mentally, I had to overcome that obstacle. And I was projecting it, you know, saying that it's other customers and it's a problem and I have to change my title. But really, it wasn't that at all. I had to get it out of my head. So Yeah. So that that's so interesting that, that you realize now that you're projecting that, that maybe imposter syndrome or the lack of confidence and... Uh, and it's cool how you got that that win that that really shifted gears. I mean, it's something that that I still work on on a regular basis, right? The self belief and confidence and imposter syndrome. It's a it's a thing. Like it's a thing that a lot of us struggle with um, from time to time. So it's good to see at, at a young age that you were able to not necessarily put that behind you forever, because I'm sure it still pops up from time to time. But make that make that big mindset shift in the business. Yeah, it was not something that I expected. I expected the young thing to be next generation and and help us propel to the next level, but it wasn't necessarily the case until I accepted it myself. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. I love that. You gotta ha- you gotta believe in yourself. Uh, a lot of times, you know, everyone else believes in us, and it's it's us that we don't believe in ourselves as much as we should or as we could. So. Um, John, you mentioned before we started hitting record that another thing that was not expected so much is you guys kind of blew up in some local neighborhood Facebook groups and whatnot. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, So that was a huge part of our early success. And still to this day, it's our number one um, source of leads is so we talked about unexpected uh, challenges early on. This was an unexpected win really on our end was uh, the, our name just kind of caught wildfire in these local Facebook groups and referrals just became so much more, so much easier. Um, we were really generating just organic leads uh, for a long time and we still primarily are, are almost all organic. So early on, I was very 
pleasantly surprised um, by how the community kind of took us in and, and recognized us as somebody trying to help the community. Uh, we got very involved. We joined. Uh, my wife is now part of the business. At the time when I started, she was an accountant. Um, so she is, is now helping with uh, our accounting and, and helps run the office. So her and I both joined the local chamber of commerce. Uh, she's actually the vice president of it now. Things that we've done, I'm on the board for my alma mater uh, in college. I'm on the, the board of advisors there for business school. We um, we started giving back to charities. We did things for breast cancer. We did a, a coat drive that was beyond anything that we could have imagined. Uh, we took seven plus full vans of coats to the church for for donations. It was it was incredible. We already have people asking us now if we're going to do it again this this upcoming year or this year. So that was awesome. Uh, we've linked up with some community leaders in town that have just been tremendous. They're customers of ours. And uh, we both shared a, a passion for helping the community and just, you know, doing things that we could. Something cool that happened this past summer uh, was they canceled the 4th of July due to COVID. And one of our customers actually reached out to us and they were like, hey, would you be willing to help? Um, since we can't do the fireworks or anything like that, what we want to do is anybody with extra pallets, we're going to give them out to people around town and everybody could paint their pallet like an American flag and put it outside. And then everybody will get a sense of, you know, patriotism and it'll be really cool, a sense of community. So we were definitely all in. And for that, uh, we started taking the pallets from our job sites, bringing them back to the office. And we would leave them. Our office happens to be right next to town hall in the center of town. So everybody was welcome to just come pick them up. It, it was a really cool community project. And, you know, you drive home, drive to the office, drive around town, see everybody with their pallets and their American flags. It was a really cool thing. Yeah, I remember when we were in the, the mastermind group together this summer, I remember you talking about that. That is, that's so cool. And it's, and you know, what's awesome to hear is that you guys are, dude, you're what, 30 years old? Yeah, I just turned 30. All right, 30 years old, you've accomplished a lot, you're part of the community, you've bought an office building downtown, right next to town hall. Like you guys are doing the right thing, you're good people, you're treating people well, and you're getting you're getting rewarded for it. You're getting that organic, you know, word of mouth, those referrals because you guys do good work and you you know your product, uh, you know your customer and you care. Uh it goes a long way. So as as you've seen already. Um, speaking of speaking of uh, of branding and, and whatnot, what is can you give us the uh, the story behind Blue Nail and how that came about? The actual name, the name, sure. So Blue Nail obviously is a unique name. We get asked a lot what it means. Um, so before I started, like I said earlier, the intent was to bring transparency and honesty and integrity and kind of change the narrative that surrounds contractors, especially in the roofing industry to kind of change that narrative. So blue nail, if you look up like the meaning of the color blue, blue stands for honesty and integrity. So uh, that's the first half of it, blue and nails to me are, if you look at any roofing or siding project, all of the nails hold it together through all the good and bad weather. They keep it together. You know, it might be nice, beautiful, hearty siding or a new Timberline or Da Vinci roof. You don't see the nails. They're by design hidden behind the project. So you don't see it. But without that, the whole project falls apart. So the intent of Blue Nail was to build a team behind the scenes that shares the common goal of honesty and integrity in the construction industry. That's awesome. Didn't you tell me that you guys did a video of that and, uh, or you're planning a video about that? You never did it or never shared it? Yeah. So we've talked about it. I, I know, you know, you've encouraged me and some other people have encouraged me to put it out there. Sometimes I feel a little bit, uh, like, I don't know, cheesy or that it's trying to promote our business. You know, it, it truly is who we are and what we're trying to build. So I, I, I go back and forth with that of like, do I want to use it to, to drive leads? Does it seem like cheesy or like I'm making it up or something? So I kind of go back and forth with that. 
All right. Well, I'll tell you here. It's not cheesy. It's uh, it's not self promotional. It's it's telling a story, and people people like to attach themselves to a story. You know, whether it's going to be a customer of yours, whether it's going to be one of your uh, you know, charitable initiatives, whether it's going to be a team member. Uh, people feel good when they can attach themselves to to people doing good things. So um, I would encourage it. So. Now that it's public, it. now that it's public that we're talking about it, you know, <laughs> we'll we'll check back in in a couple of months to see if you've done it. Sounds good. Yeah, let's talk about your brand a little bit more, John. I mean, you, you've got you guys are involved in the local community. Um, in my, I mean, we've worked with hundreds of uh, roofing companies to date, and you guys. And I'm not just saying this because you're my valued special guest right now, but like you guys have a, a really solid brand. Good, good drone. Um, photography and images and great before and afters and your community involvement. And you're, you guys are one of the ones that I use as a reference point. Like I'll, you know, we have a client that's like, what do I do? What do I post? Like, what do I say? I'll give them the link to your guys' Facebook and say, Hey, look at these guys are doing it. They're doing it right. Uh, obviously that was intentional. Can you give us a sense for how that gets done? Uh, like what your team looks like and, and what your approach is there social media wise. Absolutely. So early on, I actually went to a local media company uh, with this vision that I had and I'm just kind of explaining what we wanted to do. And in my mind, Facebook was just blowing up and it was like, well, everybody seems to be there, especially, you know, at the, at the time, uh, the older population, you know, as well was, was getting there too. So that's where our customers were. And it felt like we can build our brand on Facebook and be as visible as we wanted to be for a very low cost versus, you know, guys that go on TV and run commercials and things like that. So the vision was to get on Facebook and start doing kind of TV commercial quality videos and, and photos and things like that. So we took that and ran with it. Uh, eventually, we actually hired our own marketing manager, Rachel. And we brought her on, we trained her. She's been excellent. She flies the drones now. She's got, you know, high end photography skills. She does graphic design. She edits the videos. Um, so that's, you know, her focus each and every day is, is the brand. So it's, it's been awesome for us. It's been really a game changer. And, uh, you know, she works in the elite group with contractor dynamics, which has been super helpful helping to train her and and really all of us learn from it so we continuously build the brand through that and uh what's what's been cool is we've actually had just thinking over the past two or three months we get customers asking to work for us um you know without oh. us really putting any ads out that we're hiring so I know that we've had at least three over the past few months. We haven't hired any yet, but only because there haven't been openings as of yet. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing as well is, is you know, having people local that are customers reaching out, seeing if they can join the team. Dude, that is awesome. Like, what do, what do those people say? They're like, you guys are cool. Like, I want to come join you or like, what does that look like? So they know the brand, they know our brand. Uh, they see us, they've seen us grown, they, or they've seen us grow. Uh, they see the yard signs on different homes that they pass. And um, they know it's a good industry to be in. It's a good spot to be in. And uh, it's interesting, especially for us. I would say probably, I don't know if all three of them, but I would say at, at least one or two of them were probably partially driven by not wanting to go back to working in the city um after you know everything with the pandemic and they you know we're outside and and we're it's a whole different different ball game here rather than having to get on new jersey transit go into manhattan and do that whole thing so uh geographically we're in a great spot and uh yeah we're growing so i guess people see that and they just want to be part of it that's such a great point john you guys build a brand and, and people are always, you always see roofers online. Like, where do I find good people? I can't keep good people. Uh, and it's, you know, it, it is a little bit of the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Like if you build a great brand and a great company, people can see that and they'll be attracted to that. 
and they're going to want to join into that story and that vision that you have. So that's one part of it. And then the other part that's relevant to where we're at right now in the world, like you just said, where you're you know, less than an hour outside New York City, you've got people that have not been going to the office for the past year and a half. And now, you know, the proposition or the, the prospect of them going back and doing that is like kind of dreadful to a lot of people. And so like, that's a great recruiting tool right now. Like, hey, you don't have to go sit in an office. You've gotten used to being at home, being around your family, having a flexible schedule. Well, guess what? You can keep those things and you can still build an, an awesome career with our company. So I think that's a really strong value prop right there for recruiting and hiring. Yeah, it's been unexpected, but very cool. Yeah, switching gears just a little bit, John. I was, I was on a call with one of our clients uh, earlier today on Zoom, and uh, he's been in business a little bit over a year. They've done well, and uh, he just wanted to hop on and just kind of pick my brain about, like, hey, you know, I, I made some money. We've got a few trucks, and, you know, here's where we're at. Like, where where should I go from here? And he was really – he's really stressed out about it and really kind of building it up to be this big thing, and it's causing a lot of pressure. I'm not going to use his real name, but I was like, Frank, um, you know, I'll give you my advice based on my experience. But my biggest thing is like, you know, go, go get around some other roofing companies that are maybe, you know, not at the hundred million dollar mark, but like at the next level, like where you want to go, maybe the next year or three years and emulate what they're doing. Like, you know, don't copy, but you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Our previous guest on the show here, Adam Moss said that he's like, you know, the great thing about the roofing industry is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can just follow the blueprint for a $5 million company or a $10 million company or a $100 million company, whatever it is. But get around those people and, and uh, you know, put yourself in those environments, right? Uh, and I think that you've done that. And this isn't a plug for, for our company or anything. I know you've got some other relationships with some other contractors and organizations. So can you talk about the role that that's played in your uh, growth so far? Absolutely. Uh, that's been key. I really believe in coaching. I, I believe in getting a mentor. It's so valuable. I mean, you're basically just buying years of time and knowledge and, and just catapulting ahead. I do think that there's different coaches for different periods or, or different spots that you're at. Um, I think that I've been lucky. I early on got into coaching probably a couple of years ago and the coach I had at that time was perfect for what we needed in terms of starting to build a structure and starting to build procedures and a strategy. Um, and I think the coaching that we do now and the coaching that we're going to do in the future, it just, you have to fit, pick the one that fits with you uh, of where, like you said, where you want to be, where you want to grow and things like that. Um, because I could definitely say if I was doing some of the coaching that I'm doing now, two years ago when we started doing coaching, it, it would have been a disaster. I wouldn't have been ready for it at all. Um, even to say like the contractor dynamics elite group, uh, there's no way that my team would have been ready to enter the elite group. What last year, two years ago when we started, it's got to be the right coaching at the right time. And for me, what I've found is not only does the coaching help, but what's been really invaluable for me is being around other guys in my situation that are also seeking that coaching. So that you're all on the right path together. You could all bounce ideas off of each other. You could all discuss the same issues that you're having. And it's comforting. Um, you know, entrepreneurship can be a lonely spot sometimes, uh, especially in construction. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough. But hearing that there's other guys out there or girls that are around the country in the same spot as you, they're having similar growth or having similar issues with scaling. It's, it's comforting and it's great to know that there's other people out there. Um, I learned probably just as much from them as I do from the coaches, but th they're both super valuable. That's great to hear, man. And thanks for sharing. I've experienced that in my own career as well. Started, what, eight or nine years ago. And, and honestly, for the first few years, I was one of those guys who was like, nah, our business is unique. Like I got to figure it out on my own. It was probably a little bit of ego and pride. And then it wasn't until, until a few years in where I was like, all right, maybe my business isn't unique. You know, go through these challenges. Uh, it's, it's a little bit lonely. There's got to be people out there that I can like leverage their experience. And I got my first coach, became a business partner and 
uh, ever since then, I'm, I'm a huge fan of like, whether it's like paid mentorship or coaching or mastermind groups or, you know, just getting on an airplane and going to events and getting around like-minded people. Uh, it, it's so, it's so key because I think the most stressful parts in business and in life are when you're going through a challenge and you think that you're the only one or you're, you know, this problem is unique to you and you got to figure it out all on your own and, and put the weight of the world in your shoulders. And that's not necessary. You know, you don't have to go through that. So uh, I totally agree with that. And I, I love it in our coaching groups. You know, we, we want to, we obviously coach our clients and train them and all that, but I love it when they start talking to one another and they're sharing ideas and uh, you know, we can kind of take a step back on some of our calls and there's this conversation going on. It's just like this, this beautiful thing that, you know, where everyone's helping one another level up. So, um, so that's cool to hear your experience about that. Absolutely. What do you think, John, is your, I know you're a big, uh, you're a cerebral guy. You're, you know, you're always thinking about business and life and, you know, making the right moves. What do you see as your next, uh, kind of leadership challenge to get to the next level? Uh, my next challenge is just continuing to try to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, I'm definitely guilty of falling back, being a peacemaker, being everybody's friend. Uh, but I have to realize that sometimes that's not the best way for everybody to grow and, and realize their full potential. So that's been definitely the number one thing that I'm trying to work on. I've been reading different books, trying to uh, trying to get a different mindset on that. So I, I, I kind of see my, I've come to the realization at least that I, I have a lot to do as a leader to become better. And I'm basically putting the ceiling on my entire staff for their growth. So I have to raise my ceiling as a leader in order for them to raise their ceiling of their potential and, and what they can do to grow. That's awesome. I love that. I don't know if I've ever heard it uh, been put that way. Uh, that's awesome. That's cool. Because you know what's cool about that is if you feel like slacking off or you feel like getting lazy, uh, which I know you don't, uh, but that's, you know, it's not just about you, right? It's about your team and, and their families and their uh, their growth as well. So it's uh, it's cool that you take responsibility for that. All right, John, I'm going to let you go. I know you're a busy man running the company. You got, a, you got a few minutes for a few quick questions here, a little, a little lightning round. Let's do it. So this might be the longest question of the lightning round, but about maybe a year or two, I sent you this book uh, called The Slight Edge. And it's one of my probably top five favorite books of all time. Someone had sent it to me as a gift, so pay it forward, right? Uh, what does The Slight Edge mean to you? That was awesome. Um, I love that book. It's all about compounding small wins that over time become massive wins. Uh, the results are not immediately visible. We got to have faith. And uh, I think they said in the book that like only 5% of the people are on the right path. So it's small decisions that you really wouldn't consider life changing at all, but they're all important decisions at the end of the day. Um, and actually, I think you read it too. Uh, just recently, Winning came out by Tim Grover and uh, he kind of took it a, a another step further than that. And he was talking about, you know, when he was coaching Michael Jordan and Kobe, that it wasn't just about getting 1% better every day, which is what the slight edge is all about. Uh, for them at that level, it was about getting, you know, one hundredth of a percent better each day. And that would give them the edge over these other top tier athletes. So it was really remarkable kind of tying them both together, but. Yeah, Slight Edge was a great book. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree. Winning was awesome. I mean, it's like when you're at Michael Jordan's level, you know, it, it takes a lot of work to get 1% better. So it's just about getting a little bit better every day, winning every next decision. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my life philosophy. So um, cool to hear. What is your current morning routine? Okay, current morning routine, uh, partially based off of uh, that book, The Perfect Week Formula or The Perfect Day, one of those. He mentions the farm boy mornings where you get up and you do the hard things immediately before you do anything else. Um, so I start my morning five o'clock and I immediately do a 60 minute focus work block. So 5 a.m., unless my son is up, crying. Uh, it's quiet. You know, nobody else is really awake. Nobody's bothering me. 
Uh, no customers are calling. My staff is not at work yet. You know, it's quiet time. Uh, so I'm able to sit down and do what I need to do. Uh, after that, try to exercise from five to six, then I'll start getting things ready. Um, on the mental side, you know, I'm a little bit on the religious side, so I'll do some praying in the morning, try to get my mind right before we start. And then uh, we're out the door and we're ready to work. So I would say the morning is the most important time though. Yeah, man, I totally agree. It's all, you got to win the day before the chaos and, and whatnot sets in. So I uh, love that. How about the current book that you're reading? I just started uh, The Four Agreements, which I, did you read that recently? I think somebody had recommended yeah, it. I just, I just read it. I, did I tell you about it? I forget. You may have. You may have. So I, I just started that, um, but I, I've been doing that on Audible, um, actually sitting down and reading. I began rereading Think and Grow Rich. I've been thinking a lot more about that recently. I've been kind of diving into that and see what else I could get about out of it. It's a short book, so it's an easy read. Awesome. Right on. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, rereading books or at least going over my highlights and notes from books because, you know, we got to implement, right? It's not just about how many books we can read. Um, all right. So fun one here. The world is, uh, you know, not necessarily locked down, but we're still in this pandemic deal with whatever. Um, what's your what's the next travel destination that you're looking forward to? Uh, probably Aruba. We missed the last trip. Uh go each year through uh, the suppliers. And, uh, we didn't end up going last year due to COVID. Um, we've had some other travel opportunities that we didn't take because uh, you know, we have a young child, so we didn't want to risk anything with ourselves or our parents or anything. But I'm looking forward to getting out there. Hopefully this upcoming winter, we we'll get out to Aruba. Um, love to get back to Greece, but we'll see when that rolls into the plans. All right. Right on. Right on. All right. Cool. So yeah, thanks so much, John. I know you're, uh, you've are you got a team. Uh, you're running a, a big, you know, pretty good sized company there. I appreciate your time. If someone wants to kind of find you on social media, reach out, say hello. Where's the best place to find you? Uh, Facebook and LinkedIn are probably the best. Uh, despite talking for an hour about social media, I'm not a huge social media guy personally. Uh, but I am pretty active on Facebook. I don't post very much, but um, you know, message me there. I'll get right back to you. LinkedIn's another good spot. And uh, yeah, that's it. You could follow our stuff at Blue Nail Roofing and Siding on Facebook and Instagram as well. All right. Right on. You guys are probably the most consistent I've seen. So keep that up. Thanks so much. And uh, John, we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Joe.